Hey everyone, and welcome to AP Bio Vodcast 4.6 Cell Cycle. We are second to last vodcast in our Unit 4 on Cell Signal and Cell Cycle. So let's jump right into it and talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing. Okay. Um, so, our learning objectives. We're going to take a look at what is the role of interphase in the cell cycle. We're going to talk a little bit about what occurs during interphase. We're also going to talk a little bit about the role of mitosis in the cell cycle. And then, of course, what occurs during mitosis. And then finally, we'll talk just briefly about the role of cytokinesis in the cell cycle. So what exactly is the cell cycle? Cell cycle is basically a highly regulated series of events for the growth and reproduction of cells. Now, something important to talk about here is when we talk about the cell cycle, um, we're really talking here about somatic cells. Remember that somatic cells would be your non-reproductive cells. This is not egg sperm reproductive cells. This is all of your somatic cells, skin cells, eye cells, neurons, all of the parts of the body um, or parts of a eukaryotic organism that are not specific to reproduction, okay? So this cycle consists of two specific regulated processes. The first one being interphase. Uh, interphase focuses on growth and preparation for the cell. And the second one is the mitotic phase. And that's actually also kind of broken down into two phases itself. Number one being mitosis, which is all about the division of the nucleus. And then number two being cytokinesis, which is basically all about the division of the cytoplasm. So we're going to get into each of these in more detail as we go through. But that's sort of the overview of what the cell cycle is all about. So looking at it visually, here is sort of visual representation of the cell cycle. We have uh, our mitotic phase, which is shown as a small sliver here. Um, and that's sort of the actual div division of the cell to form your two daughter cells. Whereas the interphase is then broken up into a couple different uh, components. And that is sort of the majority of what cell life cycle is all about, okay? So again, two major phases, interphase, which is normal growth, preparation, uh, and the red, uh, the mitotic phase, which is our red here. And this mitotic phase is which, in which the DNA gets replicated, cytoplasm is split, uh, and the cell actually divides and creates those two daughter cells, okay? So let's talk a little bit about interphase. First, we have G1, which is the beginning parts of this, okay? Um, it's called the gap or gap phase because originally scientists didn't really think anything was happening here because you don't see anything when you're looking at cells that are in G1 phase. Um, basically, cells biochemically active, it's running around or going about doing its typical business. So if it's a skin cell, it's going about being a skin cell. If it's a neuron, it's going about being a neuron. It's doing its thing, okay? Um, the S phase, uh, actually, let me step back for a minute. This kind of time frame here, um, typical human cell can go through all of the cell cycle in about 24 hours. In that case, this G1 phase would be about five to six hours of the cell cycle, okay, that 24 hours. So the S phase, this is sort of the big part of preparing for mitosis. S phase is when we get DNA synthesis occurring. Right? So this is when we have the um, DNA copying itself in the um, nucleus of, the, of our eukaryotic cell. The uh, copies are being condensed uh, or are starting to sort of join together um, at what we call a centromere, getting this condensing. Um, and we're forming... Uh, basically duplicate copies of all of our chromosomes in order to be able to be prepared and ready for the actual mitotic division, okay? And then finally, the G2 phase, which is sort of the second gap. And this is where the cell, uh, oh, again, let me step back. S phase uh, typically would last about 10 to 12 hours in uh, that 24 hours if we're cycling through, okay? Um, G2 phase, which is sort of the replenishing of the energy and preparing for the um, actual mitotic division. And this is where you're going to have your 
organelles being reproduced. This is where the cytoskeleton that supports the cell starts to break down to allow for the change of shape uh, that is associated with the cell division and so on. Okay. There's another phase that isn't mentioned here that we need to sort of talk about, and that is a G sub zero phase. That G zero phase is all about um, the cell being basically getting a cell signal telling it not to enter into the S phase, not to enter into the cell cycle. It sort of almost kind of comes out of the cell cycle, goes into this G zero phase, and that's similar to the G one phase where it's basically just doing its business, being a skin cell, being a blood cell, whatever it is. Um, and so the, uh, cells will get go through phases and go through um, cycles where they may be uh, reproducing every 24 hours and going through this, going G1, S, G2, mitotic, mitosis, etc. Or they may just be staying in that G0 phase, which is basically like cycling through the G1 kind of over and over. Um, and that depends on what type of cell signaling they're getting. Okay. Okay, mitotic phase. This is sort of the biggie of the cell cycle. Mitotic phase involves a couple different steps, um, sometimes called karyokinesis or mitosis, which is our nuclear division. And then the other big one is the cytokinesis, which is the cytoplasm dividing. And we're talking the cytoplasm, which if you remember, cytoplasm is basically everything that's not the nucleus or the cell membrane. Cytoplasm includes all of your organelles like your, um, you know, endoplasmic reticulum, your Golgi apparatus, your mitochondria, all of that stuff. Okay, if we're talking just the actual liquid inside the cell, then we're talking cytosol. Okay, a couple of little pictures here to kind of demonstrate. So we have these different um, pieces here, the cells here showing different levels or different parts of the mitosis stage. And then down here we have a little bit of the cytokinesis stage being shown. So mitosis, okay, this is sort of an overview and we're going to look at each of these individually. But you have these different phases within mitosis. You have prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Cytokinesis is not technically a part of the mitosis because that is focusing on the cytoplasmic division, not the nuclear division. Okay, so prophase, that first step in mitosis, begins with a nuclear envelope breaking down. Okay, so we have that nuclear envelope, that membrane surrounding the nucleus being broken down and essentially kind of um, going away so that things can start to spread out and move around. Okay, um, our, all of our organelles move towards the outside of the cell, again, in preparation for that division. Um, so... They move out to the edges away from the nucleus, so that the nucleus is going to be able to uh, basically spread apart and line up along what we will eventually look at called the metaphase plate. Okay, uh, nucleolus disappears. Centrosomes uh, are these places where, so the DNA in the um, nucleus gets condensed into its, you know, is in chromosomes. These get uh, condensed into and reproduced into what are called sister chromatids. And sister chromatids will form almost this sort of X-like shape. Sorry about that. Um, they'll form almost this sort of X-like shape. And in the center here, these two sister chromatids, which are basically chromosomes that have been reproduced, um, and they will form this at the centrosome where they will sort of join together and they will form here okay so um, these microtubules uh, form from the spindle and um, again these sister chromatids coil really tightly together um, and they're aided by these condensin proteins in forming those coils during prometaphase okay we have the, again, these sister chromatids here. So these are basically copies of a chromosome. They're referred to as sister chromatids because they're still connected here at the centrosome, okay, or the centromere, excuse me. Um, and so this uh, kinetochore forms, uh, this protein kinetochore forms in this centromere region 
um, and that attaches to these spindles, these um, microtubule spindles, which are going to eventually pull those apart from each other. During metaphase, okay, we have this metaphase plate forming. Now, this is not an actual physical structure. This is more like a geometric plane, okay? Um, and that is going to be lined up right basically straight down along here. That's going to be your metaphase plate is this geometric plane right down the middle across here. Okay, the, the sister chromatids remain attached by these cohesion proteins. So they're still attached to each other, but they have these uh, microtubules that are now connecting to these spindles going out to the ends, of the poles of the cell out here. During anaphase, we get the actual uh, separation of the sister chromatids. So the cohesion proteins that were holding them together degenerate allowing them to completely separate. And so again, this is sort of your metaphase plate right here, and you have these now separating and pulling away from each other during anaphase. Okay. Um, they, again, move towards the centrosomes on the outside here. Um, so the centromeres that were connecting them, those are broken apart. They are connected by these spindles, and they move out towards these centrosomes on the outside or on the, at the, about by the poles of the cell. Okay, cell also begins to elongate. You see that it starts to create more of this sort of this oval shape as it stretches and moves outward, um, sort of creating space in the center here. Telophase, our last bit of the actual mitosis phase here, okay. Um, the chromosomes reach these opposite poles. Now they begin to sort of unravel. They're no longer condensed into these chromatids. Um, and so they unravel and um, begin to sort of reform into the chromosomes. We also have the spindles uh, sort of being absorbed back in. Um, and so what's going to happen is these spindles, so these blue lines here, these uh, microtubule spindles, will basically be reabsorbed or repurposed to become the cytoskeleton of the new daughter cell. Okay, and then we also have this nuclear envelope reforming to generate a new nucleus for the daughter cell, one on each side. We also get the nucleosome reforming in each of those new nuclei. Okay, so the last little bit here, cytokinesis, okay, and this is a little different in plants and animals, but cytokinesis is basically after the new um, chromosome, excuse me, new nucleus has formed and we have this elongated cell, we have this cleavage furrow forming, which is basically this pinching of the sides of the cytoplasm, and then that pinching continues until it joins all the way through very similar to what we see in endocytosis or exocytosis, where eventually it then cleaves completely through and you're left with two daughter cells right here, okay? Plant cell, it works very similar. The difference being that in the plant cell, you don't really get the elongation of the cell because of that cell wall. And so instead we get this cell plate forming right here. And this cell plate is basically building up of a cell wall in between here to eventually cut this in half to create two daughter cells. And you'll notice that especially with the plant cell here, your two daughter cells are a little bit smaller than the original plant cell. And so those will then enter into your uh, G1 growth phase of interphase where they will begin to sort of grow and develop um, and go about their normal business and so on, okay? Um, I'm going to have you do the, I'm going to ask you to do the topic questions in AP Classroom to kind of review some of this. Um, bring any questions you have to class so that we can discuss them there. Uh, and I will see you next time.